Um, this is, we do quick pitches at this uh, conference, which is for people just to sort of throw some ideas out, some ponderings, and this, this, pod, this, this presentation is very much a pondering. It's not, say, a research project or a particular statement. But I'm interested in what stories might lie behind the history of Lower Loxley and the part of the family that may show a different side uh, to rural life than the sort of heteronormative portrayal that we're so used to. Rural life in general, and bridge in particular. So I was lucky enough to visit Lower Loxley uh, last year, and aside from the awful conditions of the grounds that you can see here, I was able to wander the house, not the roof, that was boarded up, but I was able to wander around, particularly unattended. I'd been led to believe that there were some volunteer-led tours that I could go on, but from that particular email address, um, I got a message to say that the group was considering industrial action, so we're taking a bit of a respite for the moment. Now, the post-1950 uh, uh, part of the family, Ambridge part of the family, has been somewhat chronicled over recent years, as we know, but through the house I saw signs or glimpses of what the part of the ancestors and extended family that we know little of. Now, I bet this woman has some stories to tell, and I quite took a fancy to her. I would like to go out to a ball with that lady. But as a quick aside, have a look at some of the plaster work through this as well. Pargeting was a form of house decorating, similar to modern plastering, originally practised in the East Anglian region and going nationwide, but it was particularly popular in the West Midlands. Coming to the last century, here we have Nigel's more immediate ancestors as children. And then these two, a great uncle perhaps, and his lifelong companion. <laughs> <laughs> I did try this door. There was weeping behind it, so I quickly went on my way. I left well alone. But whilst I was there, I was able to do some digging around, and despite not having a guide on hand, I was able to find the family's coat of arms. This is the Pajita coat of arms. And find out that it's a medieval surname recorded around the time of Henry VIII. One ancestor was a William, who was a Lord Mayor of London in 1530. Others were recorded as being from West Bromwich and Staffordshire. But that was about it. But then comparing Ambridge to the rest of the UK, we do know that many of our stately homes uh, were home to and shaped by people who above and below stairs challenged conventional ideas of gender and sexuality. Now one of the things that started me thinking about this, uh, this idea was um, a, a project, uh, was a sort of campaign and programme by the National Trust. So in 2017, to mark the 50 years of the partial decriminalisation of homosexuality, the National Trust explored its LGBTQ uh, heritage with a campaign and a programme called Prejudice and Pride, giving prominence to these hidden, previously hidden narratives of its properties. So visitors up and down the country were able to discover hidden histories of love and relationships at its properties, exploring some of the stories of persecution and the expressions of personal identity that shocked and challenged societal norms at the time. The National Trust worked with artists to create new exhibitions and installations to really bring these stories to life um, and uncovered previously untold stories with help from academic experts. Um, and participated in community celebrations, pride, heritage, open days and the like to really build an understanding of these LGBTQ uh, histories in local communities. Now, if you want to know more, uh, Pride and Prejudice uh, was a, is presented as a podcast uh, presented by our wonderful uh, Claire Balding, but also co-hosted with a dear friend of mine, EJ Scott, who is a dress... Uh, historian and also the curator of the Museum of Transology. It's a fascinating series of six quite short little um, podcasts and that and, and talking to, to people from all sides of the National Trust up and down the country. I can't recommend it enough. But back to Lower Loxley. We've had Lily temporarily assume a lesbian identity to hide her relationship with Russ. Part of the collective reaction to this storyline was to point out the lack of gay, lesbian or queer characters um, in the Archers. And a lot of that reaction actually then took an opportunity, so it was saying there's an opportunity being missed here, to represent a rural queer experience 
that Lower Loxley would have been part of and certainly could be part of. As one tweeter commented, uh, given the circumstances under which Julia became Mrs. Partiter, I imagine that any number of London gay thespians would have visited. But the stately home, Lower Loxley's stately home to date, has been more of a secretive friend of, Meredith, of Meredith than an out and proud friend of Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> We've had uh, papers in the conference and conversations online that are around queer and bridgeology. That is a proper word. Um, the paper is a small part of that discipline, provoking the question through a consideration of Lower Loxley, where is the queer in Ambridge? The National Trust's Pride and Prejudice was a national storytelling moment of those previously hidden or just alluded to histories. And the Archers is nothing if not storytelling like the National Trust, is now the time for it to liberate its LGBTQ stories from their place in the closet. Thank you. I am happy to take questions on how boring Adam and Ian are. <laughs> <laughs> and if anybody wants to join me to bring back Charlie Thomas, I will happily recruit people. Yes! <laughs> I mean, that could be one of the, you know, an art, uh, public art uh, commission that, that they had as part of that history telling. I don't know. <laughs> if there's no other questions, I think we should move swiftly on.